Conoce las historias de las personas que son parte del cambio para proteger nuestro planeta. Esto es Sustentablemente. Conversaciones que inspiran. Un podcast original de Radio Pauta con Carolina Escobar. We're here at uh, COP16, Cali, Colombia. Jacob Trollback, thank you so much for your time, for taking a minute out of this wonderful environment that we're in to talk to us um, here at Sustentablemente. And, and what about a, a great opportunity for talking about true impact, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and inspire, hopefully, the masses, and more over than the masses, the decision makers, and through the decision makers, the masses. Great to have you. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful to be here. We were in an amazing um, space where you were were explaining how this symbol became true, how you were able to design and the story behind it, which as communicators all here could be a really nerd conversation, yeah, yeah. but we'll make, we'll, we'll make it as um, friendly as possible yeah. so that everybody will remember this image as what you need to look at as a way of life. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, thank you. Um, well, we worked with communication for a long time and uh, communication for sustainability that we started when we uh, got the honor to do the system for the SDGs mm -hmm. with the uh, 17 gold squares yeah. and, the, and the circle with them all. And I think that since we started to do that, I've, we've been every day thinking about what works in communication. And I think that um, th there are communication that's aimed at different people. And you have, of course, the academics that... And to an academic, you can just have a long, boring paper and it doesn't matter. You know, they're just like, okay, I read this. This is how the paper looks. And then you have another level, which is when you make it a little bit clearer, so maybe intellectuals can get it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, there's a nice chart here. I can, I can get it but you're still very far away from reaching out to ordinary people. And uh, I'm not saying this in an attempt to say that ordinary people are not educated, etc. but there's a huge uh, range of where people are there. So what we're working with is uh, we're trying to think about what is the topmost level of communication that we can make what's some words, some images, where everyone, like a, a seven-year-old, can just see, I get this, because that's where the conversation has to start. Absolutely. So that was, that's what we did with the, with the 17 SDGs. We, we, we just took these long, complex goals and we said, no, this is only about one thing, gender equality, or life on Earth, or this life below water, or this is about, about reducing inequalities. So it, it becomes very easy for everyone to understand, okay, I get sort of where we are. And then once you do that, then you can start to fill that with a lot of information under that level. But that's basically the idea. You're also a filmmaker and uh, there are beautiful, greatly done videos about the SDGs, you know, with stars from Hollywood, from the sto uh, sports world and, and whatnot. Um, what were the expectations uh, when you took the SDGs uh, as a communication campaign and how do you find the match with reality afterwards? Well, you know, so we've been working together with with uh, Project Everyone since day one, which is, you know, Richard Curtis started that. And he's he's really the person who understands how to get to people and uh, and also to a certain extent to spread well-being uh, around. So uh, all of the work that has been done with with films around this has always been about what are the different ways to connect with people and of course uh, the use of stars have also been something to create an appeal something that people recognize and like oh Leonardo DiCaprio says this or whoever it is so that's the sort of part of just using the whole toolbox of reaching people and then making people think about things Uh, and I think that um, a lot of the a lot of the consumption culture that has been you know rampant the last whatever growing the last 50 years say 
uh, it's so based on that people don't really stop and think. So you really have to figure out a way to people stopping and thinking what matters to you. What matters to young girls in the world? What matters to to uh, immigrants? What matters to nature? And um, I, I mean, to me, because I'm, I'm extreme, I, I love math, I love logic. And, and for me, it's just like, it's got to make sense. So how do you make it, how do you make sense when you need a rapid response? It's been a long time for the SDGs, now the biodiversity plan, but not only to have ordinary people be aware of, but take action into it. Yeah. I think that the, it's a little bit, I think that it started to be a little bit different paths for the SDGs and the biodiversity plan. Uh, because for the SDGs, it's more like we have these issues here, and if you care about these issues, engage yourself in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is great, and we're trying to make it, or we tried always to make it so that people could could be like, I'm really interested in fighting inequalities or find it, fighting for peace and justice or what it is. I actually think that the biodiversity plan, we're trying to get into on a little bit of a different level, mm -hmm. which is about what we are as human beings. Because when you start to work with biodiversity, you go from thinking that everybody knows we need pollinators, mm -hmm. we need bees. We've read about it anyway. There are movies about it? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, pandas are cute and, you know, polar bears, it's a shame what happens to them. Yeah. And, and, you know, the eagles should be able to live. We should be nice to them. So, but all of that is a perspective that comes from the outside. All of that is a perspective where we're like, okay, we're going to be, we're going to allow these animals, these ecological systems to exist. And it's missing the most important part, which is that we are biodiversity. We're a result of this planet. We have grown, our roots are this planet. And without this planet, we don't exist. I mean, some people want us to move to Mars and I say, fine, go. <laughs> but, <laughs> but don't think. But, but I mean, where, where are you going to, on Mars, how are you going to experience, you know, the sunsets that you, you find <laughs> on Earth? How are you going to Yeah, how are you going to go out in nature and just sit down on a, on a rock and look over, out over a lake? Or, or I mean, it would be plastic, uh, maybe plastic yeah. trees and uh, plants so, over here right now, right? And, <laughs> and, whenever, and whenever we're not working, Whenever we're not fighting hard to make ends meet, we want to be out in nature. We want to go out to, if, if we're lucky enough, we have a summer house or, or we have some resort or we, we meet our friends in a, a picnic. park. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and we were talking about this before um, off camera, but you know, seated on this uh, podcast as well, it was Jane Goodall saying exactly that. I mean, we are part of everything, the whole ecosystem, we belong to it. Yeah. Therefore, we need to take care of it. There is a strong connection as a unity, right? Yeah, um, yeah. What, is, what is your, because we share so many uh, values on, on the term of communications and stakeholder engagement, and we really need to get to their hearts and minds of, of whoever we want that message to get to, right? And to yeah. create a reaction upon it. What is your thinking about the biodiversity plan? What is, what is your strategy? Well, I mean, the first strategy was just that, I mean, it's a very good, it's a very good document, mm -hmm. but it's also a document that it's very hard to digest because, and, and these documents have to be that way because they have to cover all of the aspects uh, or as many as possible. But that means that when you read the document, it looks pretty boring, frankly. So for our role is to say, no, this is about this, and this is why you should care about it. So it's just about, again, finding that top level and saying that this is about this thing. And, um, and I hope that it, it, 
it becomes a tool that that gives oxygen to the conversation about biodiversity. Uh, and then we've made a system that we, if we compare it to the SDGs, is much more organic in its in its uh, visual expressions. Mm -hmm. We're not using straight lines. Everything is handmade. Everything is. We've been very ins inspired by by uh, art from indigenous people and and the Australian Aboriginal symbols, because we wanted to create something that that was as close to nature as we could come. And, and the symbol for the biodiversity framework, which is, is, uh, is a pattern that you find everywhere in nature. So we wanted to make this framework as close to nature as possible. So they're not competing, these 23 uh, goals. They're just, just completing the Compliment 17 or yeah. complementing. Yeah, I, I would say that this is like the kernel. This is the essence of hum uh, being a human being, okay. of living on this planet. And in this, there is like, we have teachers here and they are all actually, almost all, indigenous peoples and local communities. Because of course they figured out how to live in harmony with nature because they didn't have you know, the power of industrialization, which could just go out and just wreak havoc on biodiversity. They had to learn ways to live in harmony with this. And, and I think it's worth noticing, also again, going back to me being sort of a m math nerd, that, that uh, if, you, if you like equations, look at biodiversity, look at the equations that are like they're extremely dynamic and they're really all in balance, right? They, they move and they shape, but there's no garbage. There's no landfills of plastic coming out of biodiversity because everything gets reused. So that's true elegance to me. And what we have to do is to, to live in this elegant equation and not upset it by, you know, deforestations or, or poisoning rivers or because we need the rivers because that's the water we drink that's where we swim in that's where we feel alive and instead you know well we need to make money so we need these minerals and so a little mercury in the water to, I mean it's so inefficient yeah right so so I would say that if this could do anything it's it's like if we could feel some kind of spiritual connection to and this is like i mean of course you feel a spiritual connection or some connection to your family well this is our larger family this is the family of life that we're part of and and we should be really humble because we're the youngest experiments of biodiversity right <laughs> Because almost all other living organism has been here for millions or, or billions of years, right? So here comes this, I mean, human beings are amazing. How amazing aren't we? Look at, look at the love we share, look at the music we make, the art we make. Like we are so great. But then we also have this, you know, this greed that comes from the reptilian de defense brain that we need to defend ourselves. And in the path of that, we just wreck things. We just leave, you know, nature and other people also in utter misery. So, but we should be beautiful, right? Totally. Absolutely. Very well put. <laughs> yeah. Very, very well put. What do you think would have happened, I mean, what world would we have today if we implemented efficient and, uh, communications, strategic communications, 20 years ago? Really explaining through storytelling what biodiversity is about, what climate change is about, what this world of unity is about. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the biggest problem that, that we have right now, or I should say the biggest challenge that we have, people who are working for, 
for uh, equity, biodiversity, for living climate, etc., is that that one is definitely communication. We need to make sure that everyone understands the question, and it needs to be made so clear and so close to our hearts, so that disinformation doesn't stand a chance. Uh, so that's a challenge. Uh, but the other thing is that I think that we often fail to look at what's standing, what's holding us back, what's standing in the way. And, and because there's always things behind things. Everything is b part of these enormously complex equations. Um, you know, if you're going to talk about extinct uh, species, you can't talk about that without talking about colonialism, because colonialism just ripped yeah. Africa apart, ripped Lat Latin America apart, caused enormous suffering and unrest. And in this thing, you just had poverty and you had situations where just wildlife, that wasn't a concern because survival was there. And, you know, anyone here, I mean, me too, would kill an extinct animal if it would help my children from starving. You know, it's all about seeing the bigger things. And, and if you're going to work against climate change, you got to start to talk about capitalism. And I'm not against capitalism, but there's a predatory capitalism yeah. that is just like, it, they just, there are people who just don't matter and it doesn't matter how much money they have, they just want more money. And you have to understand these systems and see how you can turn them around, how you can change the conversation. Can, sorry, can, can we think or can we create, if it's not yet created, the term sustainable capitalism? I mean, I, yeah, of course. The own, because it's all part of evolution. Right? Mm -hmm. Everything is part of evolution. If you have, you know, communism was part of a revolution. It just didn't work. Capitalism may work, but it's not going to work if it destroys the planet. Yeah. Because how is capitalism going to be able to make any money? It's not going to work if it underpays the workers. And and to me, it's like everyone who's doing business need to shape up their equations because you can start a business that is really successful you have really good workplaces for for your people you pay them well you have a product that is lovely that everyone wants and then you're poisoning some rivers it's like well that's not an elegant equation you you should be able to create values in everywhere yeah. because that's what we can do right humans we can create values you got to do it without causing disruptions and co yeah. if you make money by using child laborers in bangladesh can you stand up at a at, at, at a kitchen table at a, at a party and say my company is doing something that's so brilliant if you're also is using basically slave labor labor that's not it's like shape up you got to make it better and then you can talk about sustainable <laughs> capitalism some people may may you know pull their hairs off against you know, sustainability in capitalism but i think it may work if uh, if we replace cannibalism capitalism or predatory can, uh, capitalism yeah. with sustainable capitalism estás escuchando un podcast original de radio pauta 100.5. Well, it's like terms like bioeconomy that is coming up, right? And we're talking here at, at COP, actually. Um, it sounds so logical, Jacob. It sounds so obvious to some of us, but not necessarily of all. So the next step that is coming up, and I can see you have it right there, and I'd love for you to share with us the yeah. goals that um, would kind of like complete and shape the the whole equation it's mm -hmm. been a math nerd as yeah. you've called yourself i mean i i have to say that i'm a i'm a math nerd but i'm not 
I'm not a high level math nerd. <laughs> I just like equations. My son is a high level math nerd. Okay, well. But, 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 but for me, I'm like, you know, I, but uh, okay, so here it was, we had made the, the, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, or so the Global Goals, as we like to call them. And then we started to wonder why was so little happening? Mm -hmm. Like we had this plan we knew exactly what we had to fix to create a planet of, 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 of harmony, of, of, you know, a planet that was worth living at. And then we started to think, again, like what I was saying before was holding us back. And we started to think that, oh, but wait a minute, we have to change. It's us. It's like, it's like, if, if a car is going in the wrong direction, you just, you don't say, damn car. You, you're saying, oh, this driver, we got to talk to the driver, <laughs> right? So that's, that's what we were thinking. And then we met with a guy called Eric Fernholm, who is a fantastic guy, guy who's been working with, with, um, with uh, mental health issues mm -hmm. for a long time. And we had this conversation and we said, shouldn't there be some kind of goals for us? Something that we need to know what, what we need to change? Yeah, exactly. To just, just get a little bit in inspection, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we formulated a question, which was something like, what, uh, what skills and capacities and qualities do we need, both as individuals and as groups, to be able to reach the 2030 goals. And we send that out and we get a couple of thousand of, of answers. People said like, oh, you need to have this skill and this skill. And then uh, we worked with some scientists, some professors to kind of cull this down to something that started to make sense. And then we did this thing called the Inner, inner Development Goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did was that we divided it into five uh, different dimensions and it starts with the first dimension is like us our being so it's all about what does it mean to like find out who you are and that's where and and almost the, so there are these five dimensions and they basically have five skills for each so the first one the being one starts with having an inner compass. And this is something that you probably have gotten help from your family with. Like, that's not right, you shouldn't do this. This is gonna hurt this person's feeling or this is not gonna, you know, whatever it is. Don't right? do to others what you don't want yeah, to be done yeah, to yourself. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's about the inner compass. That's That's the first thing and then integrity and authenticity it's like you got to stand up for your things and you got to be not be someone that can be pushed around you got to you know you got to be willing to learn and change which incidentally is the third one which is openness and learning mindset mm -hmm. so there are all of these skill sets and I don't have to go through all of them but but they're basically about how do we get better at just handling different things and hand and and it's like how do we handle conflicts how do we handle the climate crisis how do we handle um, like problems in the workspace it's like like what are the right behaviors i think it's worth to mention the core of them the core groups or the yeah group so names. so it starts with being so that's all about who we are yeah and then, then just show oh, to the camera yeah, yeah. and the so <laughs> And the, I'm not used to being on camera. You're doing great. You're doing wonderful. It's like a morning show. Yeah. <laughs> well, like a night, night, night live, you know, late night show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, so being is the first one. And there I said it's inner compass, integrity, openness, self-awareness and presence. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, if we feel like we've landed in who we are, it's like how good are we at thinking about things? So here we have things like critical thinking, like, is this right? Does this make sense? And then you have complexity awareness. And, you know, I think there's a misunderstanding about complexity because people think about, I remember when I started to work with these questions, I, I had this line that says, 
complexity is good but hard to understand. Mm -hmm. And I had a colleague who was like, no, complexity isn't good. That's just, uh, but it actually is, right? Johann Sebastian Bach, that's complexity. Like art is complexity. Exactly. By diversity is complexity. An iPhone is complexity. <laughs> Everything that we create is creating a higher level of complexity. And it's wonderful. That's the wonder of, of humankind, yeah. right? But we got to understand it. So understand how, how systems works. And then uh, perspective skills, like put yourself in another person's shoes. Yeah. We've, we've learned, but like, how does this look from another, Point for someone who grew up in another culture or from someone who has another stake in this? And then you have sense making, which is, of course, like, how do you make sense of all of this complexity, everything that's going on? That's also a very good skill. And then long term orientation and visioning. And this, of course, goes back to when we were talking about indigenous peoples because that's the only thing that existed like you know you, you gotta grow a society your your family your tribe so that you survive long term that's always the goal right and slowly you find out new ways to do things and better it but always in in harmony with nature anyway and then you have relating which is like if we have a heart if I call it that, and our mind. How do we relate to other people? How do we relate to nature? And there we have to relate with appreciation, which is so essential. Like I appreciate so much being here and talking to you. And um, connectedness. It's like we got to find a way to connect with other people. And uh, we, had a, we actually had an IDG summit um, about a week and a half ago. And there was one guy who was saying that instead of saying hello or good morning, we should just say, I see you. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's a way to like... Yeah. Acknowledge. All right. Acknowledgement. Yeah. You, I, I'm here now. I see yeah. you. Yeah. And... Um, Am I yeah. stepping forward if I go for collaboration? Am I just jumping? Oh, yeah. So uh, humility and stuff like that and then collaboration. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because when you have, when you know how to connect, it's like, how do you work together? And that's hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So uh, communication skills, uh, co-creation skills, yeah. inclusive mindset and intercultural competence. I think this also goes very, it's adjacent to perspective skills that you can really work with people who come from a completely different frame mm. of mind. And actually I was thinking these values are completely transcultural. They go across every culture on humankind. Every age and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think they do. And, and I have to say that this framework started in Sweden. We got uh, uh, a lot of help and encouragement from both uh, Western Europe and America. And we now actually have a survey that's worldwide because we know that this is still a work in progress. It's very good. It's yeah, very, good. very good, but it can still be better. So now we're especially trying to get in other cultures and and also very much uh, uh, connecting with different um, uh, indigenous people and, and, and communities because they, you know, they have they they can point out other things. I mean, one one uh, uh, one way to know that this is incomplete is that in, in the first edition, forgiveness wasn't in it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it's like, how can you make a framework about how we can solve conflicts without having forgiveness in Absolutely. it? And what about self-forgiveness? Well, that, yeah. Well, I think that that's the thing because people don't understand forgiveness either, I think, or in Western yeah. culture. We think that, I mean, if, if you do something bad to me yeah. and I forgive you, it, you think that I'm doing that for you, that yeah. you can like, oh, fine, now Jacob isn't mad at me anymore. Yeah. But I'm doing that for me. Mm. Yeah. I'm not doing that for you. Yeah. I'm just doing it so I can move on. That was something bad that happened. I'm not going to be fixated on this anymore. I know these things happening. I forget, I forgive you for saying this thing. It was a little bit mean. Yeah. And then, you I know. I still think you're great, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I love the last one. To me, that is so, so important. Trust. Oh yeah. So trust under under uh, how do we how do we um, 
collaborate. And trust is like there are some like mega skills here. And trust is, you know, when authoritarian leaders like want to take power, the only way they can do it is by crushing trust. Uh -huh. Because if people don't trust each other, then we're afraid. And if you're afraid, then it's very easy to say that someone is trying to take your house away and I'm a strong man and I'm going to come in and protect you. So trust in everything is it's like, and I, don't, I, I know that trust is something that you have to build. And, um, you know, I think that it was Hem Hemingway who said that the only way to know if you can trust a person is to trust a person. And we just have to be that daring to trust someone. Yeah. And, and you know... Thinking about trust first and not vulnerability first. Yeah. And, and trust, of course, is hard because... I mean, in the spirit of always finding the reason for things, I mean, let's look at racism. Racism isn't something that someone invented. It's like we're nervous when it comes to things that is not us. It's like we see a person that doesn't look like us and we're like, ooh, can yeah. this be danger here? And that's why if, if you crush trust, then racism also works, it like it, it goes up. Right? Because it's 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 the best antidote. I don't understand your language. You don't look like me, but I am going to trust that you're a good person, just like I'm a good person, and we can share a cup of coffee. Yeah, Jacob. Great. And in that sense, um, that lack of trust too takes us to polarization, which is mm. really going on in the world yeah. right now. How do you foresee this inner goals to take place within? society or do you consider yourself um, naive maybe in that sense thinking that society could really change into just um, introspection a little bit of all of us in trying to become a more um, conscious creatures on this planet yeah I I mean It's 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 very complex and and it's sometimes it can be it can be discouraging to know where to start mm -hmm. because there's a lot of uh, you know I said when I was saying before with, with the extinction of species well we need to deal with colonialism I and mean, that means that if you want to save the elephants you need to get the multinationals out of Africa yeah. like that's a pretty good that's a good big ask. And when it comes to all of these questions, yeah, there's a lot of systems that has been built up. But that's why I think that a lot of things goes back to biodiversity. Like, because if the life we're living today, if that was a great life, and unfortunately, yeah, we're sucking the planet dry, but we're having a party. And who cares? You know, it's like drinking too much and not caring about the hangover that you're going to have the next day. If that was the case, I would be like, mm, this is going to be a challenge. But the fact is that no one is happy. Mm. You know, mental health is this a huge crisis. So everything that we're doing now, if we look at all the systems, who is actually benefiting from it? We know that nature, biodiversity, that's just going down. Mm -hmm. We know the climate is just heating up, making it so that we all of a sudden have flooding and fires and, and, and tornado. Those Well, that sucks, right? Mm -hmm. Because our house gets torn up. And if we just were happy, but we're miserable. Mm -hmm. And if you, especially if you look at young people, because they're just, they're not like still left in the, 80s or whatever when you went to party and like yeah they just this is their reality and they just look at this and it's like holy crap this is what so and and all ages of course are riddled by i mean loneliness has never been as high in the world as today so who is benefiting from what happening now who are they And you can probably point out a few thousand people who are just having the time of their lives. And then you have other people that are just not necessarily miserable, but definitely not happy. So that's, you know. What would be your call then to take action? What would be your, like, you, like if you would have to resume it into one target or one goal or... 
I mean, I I think that the uh, that the connection why the reason why I mentioned biodiversity in this is that we've been torn out from nature. We've just we've just commoditized nature, and it's basically our our garage where we just go in and pick whatever we want, and we don't care about it. That's what what the consumption politics have have made. But um, so so I think that the and then we're really happy, uh, unhappy about it, and and we have dehumanizing nature. Nature and Robin Walkimer is writing so wonderfully, beautifully about this. But that we have, you know, made nature and animals an it. There's no personality in that. We need to just embrace that and embrace our family and feel like, oh, you know, I'm out in nature because I belong here. Mm -hmm. And if you go out and start to feel that belonging when you're sitting on the beach or you're walking in the forest and you're putting your phone aside, then I think that it can become almost like a virus. It's like, oh, what am I doing with my life? I'm just like working in this you know this this wheel of just trying to get a promotion and make more money so i can have, have a bigger apartment and it's like and after a while we're going to get to the point that it's like well none of this matters and then we're just going to be lonely and and so i think the connection to biodiversity that's really something and and you know i'm i told you this before i'm i'm swedish which means that you know, I think that Sweden is probably one of the most atheist countries in the world uh, because we had Carl von Linnea who, like, took the, who went out cataloging nature and then Darwin was just making sense of it and was like, well, this is a system that starts with the Big Bang and the nuclear reactions in stars. So, which doesn't mean that this isn't beautiful. It's actually more beautiful that this has grown out of just bacteria than that there was a god who did, ta-da, <laughs> here you are, right? But, but, but I, I, I'm not against like the whole idea to find another purpose, to find a spirit, spirituality. And I think like a nature religion would be wonderful. And funnily enough, that's what the indigenous peoples have, right? They worship their mountains and their forests and their waters. So if we could go back to that and put really value on the stuff that's giving us life, absolutely. then a lot of the other thing is just going to be like, I don't need a new phone. I don't need like a new car. Well, an EV car we probably need <laughs> because the gas car because has to go. But you know what I mean? So, so. Um, and, and so also to understand nature. For example, we, we are, you know, surrounded by these little flies here. Yeah. But, you know, they may be pollinators. You know, the, everything that is in nature is needed, right? Yeah. Even though if they sting you, if you're not careful enough, right? Yeah. But uh, I think I think it's important what you're saying. He said waving a fly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Go, move from here. I won't kill you. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's true. And I, I feel like, like this work that we've done for a year and a half, uh, has really, uh, it's, it's been so, it's changed me in so many ways. Like, so, I mean, I was, I learned from my dad, he never like squashed a, a, a spider or something. He always wanted to carry it out. And, yeah. and he was yeah. like, it didn't do us any harm. It's just lost its way, yeah. you know, and, uh, and well, we got in between. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I, I, I'm clearly going to swat a fly, a uh, mosquito, I mean, but, but I mean, a, a fly It's like, yeah, I don't want to eat him in, in my food, but yeah. He's part of this whole thing, Absolutely. and there's like nothing to be afraid of. <clears throat> I think two concepts came alive uh, in this podcast, which is one is sustainable capitalism, and the other one is nature religion. <laughs> so maybe yeah. we, we well, become the promoters of these two. I, w I would say though that let's work on the sustainable capitalism because <laughs> I, I saw it kind of down in it <laughs> well the only reason I mean conscious capitalism has been out for a while mm. I think we need to get away from sustainable I, that yeah. word 
and I'm not saying that because of. I mean, we can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But I'm thinking of my daughter. And How do you communicate it then? And I mean, businesses that survive and strive and have more longevity through sustainability. Well, the thing is that that um, I mean, sustainability. Of course, we need to care about it. I'm just saying that the terminology uh -huh. has become to a young yeah, generation. Yeah. The word means absolutely nothing that's true. I talk to people and they're like well this is something that big big corporations and even the oil companies have been talking about now yeah. and so that I think what's interesting part of sustainability is ability right it's like an, an nice. ability to sustain nice that's something like so if we can find something there then because the word is like i'm i'm sorry yeah, it's, too much it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 yeah for sure it's, it's like if you have a power it. scale it's like yeah, diminished it's somewhere at 0.1 <laughs> is the yeah, importance yeah, exactly. of sustainability exactly. as a powerful the word. ability to sustain the businesses yeah i love that yeah i love that. jacob thank you so very much for your time you. for your inner uh, conversation and one last thing that i ask everybody ah, to impact right. what is really for you what, what can you define as true impact and how i think that true impact is just i mean there's there's a lot of uh, going back to young people there's a lot of young people who's like well what i do doesn't matter i think the one thing we have to think about is that it's that that it's just the power of all of the people the power of eight billion people like what you do if you multiply that by eight billion it makes an enormous difference and all the problems that we have are huge problems because they're multiplied by eight billion people so we just need to i have, I have a friend who always says uh half the bad double the good which is also a way to actually get four times the, the, yeah, the thing. Yeah. But, but to me, that means that it's important to build friendships, talk with your friends, and decide, for example, we're not going to eat meat, or whatever it is. Like, we're not going to do this. And it might feel like a small thing, but if you take the power of multiplying that by eight billion people, and even if you're just in your community, It's, um, I mean, just just a short thing. I was talking about sustainability when we just had done the SDGs and I was talking at a school and someone asked me, since you started to work with sustainability, what have changed in your life? What have you, what change have you made? And I said, well, I'm trying to fly as little as I can. And then I've stopped eating meat. And then afterwards, These kids came up to me and they were so not impressed. They were like, I don't know anyone who eats meat. Like, <laughs> this was in Sweden. None of my friends eats meat. Like, what are you talking about? That was, yeah. should we applaud, applaud you, for, you that? for that? <laughs> so so I, I, I think like the impact really comes from understanding multiplications. And understanding is like with voting. If you don't vote, nobody else is going to vote. If you're going to recycle something everyone else is going to recycle it because we're connected and and all of these things spread so we got to spread good vibes we're going to be hopeful because if we don't everything that grows is driven by hope nature is driven by hope like what is like i hope hope there's going to be some energy when i grow up through this brick here yeah. like you know i hope there's going to be some like everything that grows is just like fueled by hope i mean it's fueled by energy from the sun and stuff like yeah, that but yeah. but so so hope like go get together and say like we don't want it this way and i'm going to change and you're going to change and talk to your family to change and then we, then it can just spread we have this multiplier effect yeah. with goes good abilities yeah. jacob thank you so much jacob really amazing appreciate you. it really really appreciate it really thank enjoyed you so it. much here i'm well, so happy yeah great that we're making so. new friendships then and multiply yeah. the good effect yeah thank jacob, you everybody <laughs> thank amazing. you great Escuchaste conversaciones que inspiran y nos invitan a tomar acción en el cuidado de nuestro planeta. Esto fue Sustentablemente, junto a Carolina Escobar, un podcast original de Radio Pauta.